Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to create an API within five minutes, including authentication. So let's get started. So uh, to achieve this, we're going to use uh, Feathers.js. It's a lightweight framework uh, based on uh, Express, so it's Node.js. Uh, we can use uh, TypeScript as well. Uh, this framework is mostly known for its uh, uh, CLI and its socket IO uh, options. But when you use it as a REST API, you will get all your endpoints for free. Uh, meaning, when you create a service, it's a service-based uh, framework. You get all your REST API endpoints without even writing a line of code. And uh, on top of that, we can use uh, uh, the CLI to generate authentication. So before we get started, it is uh, good to know a little bit about uh, the HTTP endpoints that exist. Uh, and also uh, that you know your way around Postman uh, for testing uh, APIs. Um, I wrote an article about this uh, as well, which I'll put in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, install Feathers uh, globally because they uh, have a CLI and we need to use it. And uh, therefore you can use this command that you see right here. It's npm install at feathers.js slash cli dash g for global I'm not going to do it because I already have it installed and uh, when you have that installed you can start generating the app with the feathers command you get some uh, questions on what you want in your app um, you want to select TypeScript because you have on the modern API. Uh, you can choose whatever you like here, uh, NPM. And we're going to want the, at least the REST option. And this is not important for now. We want authentication because that's what we uh, want to have. And we're going to choose local for now. But you can see here there's a lot of options to choose from. And this is the entry point for uh, users. We can just leave it like that. And here you see a conflict because I already am in the app folder, but I'm gonna break this one off. But if you press enter, you will um, see some stuff in your terminal and the app will be generated. And uh, when the app is generated, you will see something like this structure you see right here. When we have the app, uh, we also want to create a, a, a service. So inside of the app folder, um, we can use the CLI again. We're gonna type feathers generate. And this time we're gonna add service. And we're going to a couple of questions uh, again. We press mongoose and the name of the service will be uh, movies. And we can just leave that default. Uh, we can type here yes and now you see here that there's also now a movies folder created so what is happening right here um, I'm going to walk you through what's created when we uh, uh, generate a service right so here's a model this, this is what we get standard uh, when we uh, uh, create the service and we get uh, here a class right which uh, we can use we have here the hooks this is where you can intercept the uh, requests I'm going to show you in a moment and here we see the service itself so here I customized the one a little bit to uh, fit my needs and this is basically uh, the type you want for your uh, schema and um, that's what it will test on and this is the users model which is uh, default so now we want to test the endpoints of our movie service so uh, let's uh, run the app using this command npm run dev
And you see that the app is running on localhost 3030. So let's open uh, Postman. And um, this is something you can get from Feathers, just a basic set of API calls. And in this case, you first want to create a user. I al already created this one. You just have to enter the email password, create user, post request to users. And to be able, uh, yeah, so we're now going to get the movies. But what you will see, when you try and get the movies, is that they're not authenticated because we said we want to enable authentication. So you have to create a token using the user we created. So we go into the authentication endpoint. We send a post request with the strategy, local, uh, the email and the password you uh, selected. And here you will see you get the access token. So you're gonna copy and paste this one. And so when you get the movies, you're going to add it in the authorization. You're gonna select bearer token and paste the token right there. And when we send, now you get the request. There's no data yet, but we see we have access now to the endpoint. So let's try and create a movie. So again, we have to enter here the bearer token. And we just have the basic text and the test. And you see here, we created the new test entry in the movies database. So we can again test it by using the get. We're gonna get the movie list. Now you see our entry is here. So what you just saw is that we tested our endpoints. Uh, also behind the authentication and uh, user creation. And uh, we didn't even write a single line of code. So, um, but there of course is some code. So I'm gonna show you here. Um, this is the app that gets uh, generated and this is the the service we were using that was the movie uh, uh, service and it has now this model just the text and that's it but of course like I did here in the custom one you can extend it however you like um, and we work with the hooks so what are hooks um, basically before every uh, endpoint that gets fired to the API uh, you can uh, do something before that happens so before it gets in you can intercept it and you can do on all endpoints you can do an action so in this case you already see here the authentication you can do it on find get create update patch remove every uh, every endpoint you can do it after so first it gets in and then it needs some uh, transformation uh, and then you can also do something with it and you can also do something with it on error. So it's I can show you here, for example, what happens when I comment out or when I comment out this line. I'll put an empty array back. So now there's no uh, hooks anymore. So let's test the endpoint again. I removed the authentication because I removed it, uh, removed it as well. So if I remove it here, there's no authentication anymore. I now get it because I disabled authentication. And if I comment it back in, you see that again, I need authentication. So that's basically how uh, the hooks uh, work. So I can also show you uh, uh, what a typical function looks like. So that's what we have here. And what you see is that in every function, you, pa you pass the context. And the context is the whole, uh, all the data in the app. So I can show you that. I will copy paste the function I made here. Put in the movies hooks. 
have to import the hooks context as well because we want to use the type definitions I'm going to add those as well alright so we're going to make this testing hooks here and I show you what the context is so we can remove this this is what the, what the function needs to contain it needs to a function and it needs to be async and it needs the context and return the context because the data gets passed through so if it will console log and say I want to console log the context and now it, will, it won't work you probably guess why because it's not in the hooks yet so what you want to do is to put it in the hooks I'm gonna dis do it in this one I'm gonna disable authentication for this one right now I'm gonna add testing hooks right here so here of our console make a little bit bigger so I'm gonna fire uh, this, this endpoint and here you see the context object that goes through every function As you see this is quite a lot and also if you want to mutate uh, data this is also the way so you pass the context and a context you can overwrite it and return it again like you see here Uh, here we uh, also do something similar so um, this one is a little bit more complex but what I did here was uh, uh, wait for because what you also can do with this with this context and we can um, go to other services very easy by using this so here in this learning module service we go to the users and we find uh, we can find the user so uh, here is just this is all the users so it's no, there's no selection so what this does is it selects all users from the service and this is basically uh, a MongoDB query so you can query the database right here um, on those users we're going to map and there uh, we're going to check uh, we're going to add users to the array in the, in the schema that have a, a progress of zero and that's uh, basically this schema right here and when we th that's because when we create a new learning module we want to add uh, all users to that so that was an explanation of how the uh, app looks so what you see here is that uh, I use context.data to overwrite uh, the context and that you can do on create so when you want to overwrite data that comes in you can intercept it and with context.data you can uh, overwrite it so when you go to the feathers website there's a lot of documentation on how to use the context and when you use which context so there you have it, your own TypeScript API within 5 minutes with authentication and all REST endpoints without writing a single line of code. It is very easy to get started with this API um, and the workflow is really nice with the hooks, you saw it, it's, uh, when you go use it more you appreciate it. So uh, I would say give this a try. Uh, and. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about it. I will also put a link to the article in the description so you can uh, go through it in your own pace. See ya.